Nessoia meningitidis is a bacterial pathogen that is responsible for cerebrospinal meningitis. The meningitis is an inflammation of the envelope that surrounds the brain. Only in some circumstances that are still unknown, meningococcus can leave the nasopharynx, get into the bloodstream. Once it will be in the bloodstream, meningococcus usually crosses the blood-brain barrier to invade the meninges and to be responsible for meningitis. The aim of this work uh, was to identify how the meningococcus can open the blood-brain barrier. In vitro, meningococcus adhere to brain endothelial cells and form colonies, shown here in blue. These colonies trigger the formation of finger-like membrane protrusions that are rich in actin, esrin, and in signaling proteins including Rho GTPases and SARC, as well as junctional proteins such as V cadherin. The membrane protrusions surround the colony as shown here in these electron microscopy images. This allows the colony to resist blood flow force stresses to which it is subjected in human cerebral microvessels. These four stresses can be reproduced in vitro. Here you can see two bacterial microcolonies proliferating under flow conditions. In only four hours the bacterial colony will grow over the cell surface, delocalizing signaling and junctional proteins to open intercellular junctions. This allows bacteria to cross the endothelium, provoking cerebrospinal meningitis. We set out to identify signaling proteins that are involved in this process. It was already known that meningococcus adhere to endothelial cells via an adhesion receptor, but that the bacterial-mediated signaling required a second distinct receptor. Signaling from this unidentified receptor resulted in the recruitment of proteins under the bacterial colony. A strong candidate to set off the signal transduction pathway was beta-arrestin, a scaffolding protein known to interact with the majority of protein partners involved in meningococcal signaling. We found that beta-arrestin is indeed recruited under the bacterial colony and via docking and activation of SARC induces the formation of actin-rich membrane protrusions. We were also able to show that the G-protein coupled receptor, the beta-2 adrenal receptor, is the signaling receptor that recruits beta-arrestin to induce the signal transduction events elicited by meningococcus. Treatment of endothelial cells with an agonist for the beta-2 adrenal receptor results in its internalization. This results in the inhibition of beta-arrestin recruitment and of all the other proteins important for meningococcal signaling. We show that the beta-2 adrenal receptor beta-arrestin partnership is sufficient for meningococcal signaling. Infection incompetent hex cells induce no esrin recruitment under the colony. However, transfection of hex cells with the receptor and beta-arrestin restores signaling induced by meningococcus. This reconstituted signaling in hex cells resembles that found in endothelial cells. Esrin and actin, here in red, are recruited under the colony and clearly localize in the apical region of the cell surrounding the bacteria in membrane protrusions. This pathway is therefore necessary and sufficient to trigger meningococcal signaling. Inhibition of this pathway will thus inhibit the resistance of the bacterial colonies to stress forces under flow conditions, as we can see in this video. Lack of signalling will lead to a failure of cell-to-cell -cell junction opening. Beta-arrestin is also involved in the delocalization of junctional proteins under the colony, depleting them from the junction. This eventually leads to junctional opening and bacterial crossing of the brain endothelium. So Matthew, what are the main take-home messages of the study? Well, the first is that meningococci interact with and activate the beta-2 adrenal receptors. Then, receptor recruited beta restin activate SARC and delocalize cell junction proteins. Therefore, 
bacteria colonies required beta arsine for stable adhesion and to cause the endothelium. Yes, but last but not least, since agonist induced endocytosis of beta 2 adrenal receptors actually prevents meningococcal infection, beta 2 adrenergic agonists in turn might be useful for the treatment of the most serious form of meningococcal infection, the septic shock.